Bobby Lee Claremont and the Criminal Element, Jeannie Mobley. Champaign, Illinois, 4.42 a.m. I opened the door and stepped out. Bobby Lee, thank goodness. When you didn't get back on the train in Centralia, I was so worried about you. Where have you been, said Mrs. O'Halloran. With Leon and Terrence, I said, proud of myself for avoiding another lie. Listen, Mrs. O, Miss LeBlanc, I tried to tell you before, you are walking into a trap in Chicago. If you get the insurance money, Kelly plans to take it. If you don't, he might hurt you. Neither way, Sergeant Hayworth plans to pin Jimmy's murder on you. He knows you couldn't have married because he knows... I didn't know how to say it. It seemed utterly foolish where her skin was as fair as mine to call her colored. He knows the truth about you. I know, she said, placing a gentle hand on my arm to call me. You know? She nodded. It's not a secret that can be kept in New Orleans, and I'm sorry you've been drawn into the thick of it. From the moment we left New Orleans, everyone's tried to use you. It was wrong of all of us, and ever since you got hurt, I've been trying to think of a way to get you out of it. But you are going to get hurt, too. How can I help you, I said. I knew the risks before I ever got on the train, she said. I knew that Sergeant Hayworth had most likely figured out the truth about my past, and if he had, he wouldn't let me get away with the insurance scam. But it's not a scam, is it? I protested. You did love Jimmy enough to be his wife, didn't you? More than enough. You'd have married him if you could have, right? She nodded. If only we'd met in the North where I could be legally considered white, we could have done it properly. And your baby is his son. Isn't that who the life insurance is supposed to protect? If Sergeant Hayworth pins Jimmy's murder on you, you will hang. She nodded, looking pale. I know. That is why I had to take my chances on this trip. It's not so much what happens to me that I'm worried about. It's Jimmy Jr., even if the Hohallerans won't accept me, even if I'm arrested and taken back to New Orleans, I'm hoping to convince them to raise my little boy. If they will take him in, he can grow up with all the privileges of a white man. That's the best gift I can give him. But he needs his mother. She shook her head. With me in New Orleans, he will have nothing. He'll be somewhere between white and colored, same as me, not fitting in anywhere, with no opportunity to advance himself. I chose to pass as white because I loved Jimmy, and I had to be with him. But now that I've lived in the freedom of that world of privilege and wealth, I can't deny my son that life. I can't take him back to New Orleans to work the docks. A white Yankee family can give him opportunities I never dreamed of. But a train conductor walked through the depot, ringing a handbell announcing time to board. I looked at Nanette, a knot of dread in my stomach. There was no way out for her in Chicago. Get off the train now, Mrs. O'Halloran, I said. Take your baby and your things and slip away from all them now. They won't know where you've gone. Go somewhere else and start a new life completely. She shook her head again. Kelly's friends would find me. The only skill I have is my voice, and they have connections in every club for hundreds of miles. And I could never give my boy a good life by doing laundry or waiting tables. He's what matters now, Bobby Lee. But you should stay out of sight the rest of the way to Chicago. If Kelly doesn't know where you are, he'll forget about you. You're just a kid, not enough of a threat to matter, and thank you for trying to help. You are a kind soul. Now get back to wherever you've been keeping yourself. She gave me a kiss on the cheek. I hope your aunt in Chicago treats you real fine. So that was that. She turned and walked back to the train. I had achieved nothing. Sister Mary Magdalene was not going to help me and my hopes for my future in Chicago were all dashed. I had gotten myself on the wrong side of a gangster and given away my escape for nothing. All that waited in Chicago now was disaster. But Sister, Mistress, but Sister Mary Magdalene, like her boss, worked in mysterious ways, which probably meant she already had someone headed for the Champagne train station to retrieve me. I'd be caught for sure if I stayed, so there was nothing to do but go on.